Welcome to this video series about microchips fan controllers. I'm Eric Staples, I'm an applications engineer at Microchip, and in this series we'll go over Microchip's various fan controllers, walk through a general application setup that will work for most of our fan controllers, and give you some practical tips to consider when you're using one of our fan controllers. Before you begin designing, it's helpful to know what kind of fan controller you'll need in your application. In this video, we'll give a brief overview of our fan controllers and go over a variety of applications they can be used in. In Microchip's portfolio of fan controllers, there are two different types of fan controller, closed loop and open loop. Within the closed loop fan controller devices, there are several commonalities among the different families. They are all I2C or SM bus compatible, they also all have stalled or aging fan detection capabilities, a spin-up routine, ramp rate control, configurable PWM frequency, a watchdog timer, and a fan speed control algorithm. The EMC230X family of devices are RPM-based PWM fan controllers and are strictly fan controllers. They are the most accurate at controlling fans with up to 0.5% accuracy, from 500 RPMs to 16,000 RPMs. The 230X family consists of the 2301, 2, 3, and 5, where the last number indicates 1, 2, 3, or 5 available fan channels. We'll mostly focus this video series on this family as we discuss the fan controller features. The EMC2305 has an evaluation board that we'll talk more about later called the ADM00879. The EMC-210X family, except for the EMC-2101, are similar to the EMC-230X family, but they can also control fans based on temperature. The EMC-2103 has one fan channel, one internal temperature channel, and three external temperature channels, and has its own evaluation board, the ADM-00902. The EMC-2104 and 2106 have two fan channels and five temperature channels, one internal and four external. The EMC2105 has one fan channel and five temperature channels, and along with the EMC2106, it has a built-in linear fan driver. The EMC2106 also comes with an internal DAC to control fan speed as well, and it can be set up with an external EE prom. In addition to using the fan speed control algorithm to control fan speed, these devices can use a temperature lookup table to vary fan speed. Finally, there's the EMC2112, which has one fan channel, three temperature channels, and a built-in 600 milliamp linear fan driver. This device, however, does not utilize the lookup table, but it does still have all the other features common to the closed loop fan controllers. In the open loop fan controller group, we have the EMC2101 and the TC64X, 5X, 6X, and 7X family. The EMC2101 is also I2C and SM bus compatible and can control fans using PWM or a DAC. It has two temperature channels and has the option of interfacing to an external EE prom for auto programming upon power up. The EMC2101 controls fan speed using a lookup table based on temperature. The TC6XX family is unique in that it does not require any software overhead. They can be used to control one or two fans based on an internal or external temperature sensor. Now that you have an idea of what kind of fan controller options we have, where can you use one of these? Typical fan controller applications are server cooling systems, industrial and networking equipment, laptops, projectors, and just about any other application that uses a fan. The nice thing about using these parts is that many of the integrated features reduce microcontroller and FPGA overhead and reduce development time and cost as they operate autonomously once they are configured. No need to waste processing power or lock up your microcontroller just to control a fan. Many of our parts can provide alert interrupts when a fan has stalled or even when it has aged and can't reach its usual maximum RPMs. As I briefly mentioned before, they all have many features that make these parts really convenient to use. 
and we'll talk more about them in future videos. Thanks for watching. Stay on for the next video in this series where you'll learn the basics of DC fans and PWM signals.